Welcome to Better Relationships, Better Life, where relationships expert Judy K. Herman and her guests share insights that can help you move through conflicts in your 9-to-5 jobs and your 24-7 lives. Crack the clarity code and create deeper connections beyond the messiness of relationships. Here's your host, Judy K. Herman. This episode definitely applies to businesses, leaders, and families. As a speaker and retreat facilitator, I enjoy supporting organizations as well as entrepreneurial couples. Find me on LinkedIn, Judy K. Herman, or my website, judyspeaker.com. You'll enjoy this guest, Jody Lentz, facilitates better teams, better meetings, and better decisions. His creative communication and innovation approach helps organizations think, plan, and act strategically. His passion is engaging organizations to create high-performance, low-drama work cultures. Jody's clients span the government, higher education, entrepreneurial, and corporate realms. One of his proudest business achievements has been on a team developing Serious Play, a product for the Lego company. Based in Nashville, Jody and his wife of 34 years have three adult sons and two grandchildren. Let's listen in. Thank you so much, Jody, for being on the show. I figured what you do for teams, you facilitate better teams, better meetings, and better decisions. You're an awesome guest for better relationships, better life. Well, we'll see, but thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your confidence in me. And I want folks to know that we met, I don't know, maybe it was three weeks ago or so. So I belong to, I know people are listening from all over the world, maybe, and, and all over the United States, but I belong to Leadership Chattanooga. And Jody, you were our facilitator for our group of what 45 or so team yep. members and so yep. I would I was so um, engaged in the teaching and what you presented so I want folks to know you Jody and yeah so give us the reader's digest version about who you are what you do and how you help well so I am a husband and a dad and a brother and a son and also a facilitator. So I take great pride in being a facilitator, uh, not a consultant. I sometimes have to describe that for people. Facilitators believe in the power of the team and that the team probably has the answers that they want to get to, but maybe haven't been asked the right question yet. So facilitators are in that question role. And that's a, that's a role I like to play. And this is like, I guess, the third chapter of my professional career. My first chapter was all in publishing. So I was a designer and a writer and an editor, publisher, all sorts of things. If if ink went on paper, I probably designed or wrote parts of that. Uh, my second chapter was really all around more corporate sales and marketing roles. And that gave way to um, my, my kind of last company I worked for was uh, the Lego company. And in that role, I got to meet a lot of great consultants around the world and got really switched on by who they were and how they did their work. And I, I chose that as my path uh, starting in about 2004. So the, the third chapter, the current chapter is the, is the facilitator chapter. Well, I want to hold this because this is so cool. And there's a lot that I'm finding out about you even, even after we've met. Uh, so you were in the what publishing world in your, I love it how you say these are chapters of your life. <laughs> we yeah. all have our different versions of ourselves in different chapters. So I love it that you use this analogy. So you did designing and, and you also wrote, like you wrote your own books. Did you, were you a ghostwriter? How, how did that work? Well, it was more a magazine for more my forte, which probably coincides with my uh, short attention span, <laughs> but it's, it worked great. I, I loved, I loved doing that work, but yeah, I started as a, as, a, as a journalism student at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. And uh, while I was there, the Macintosh computer came out just to date myself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and immediately kind of saw the connection between design and what I was learning as a journalist and uh, realized you could, you know, one person could do all that now. And so I uh, started that and, and ran that through, I guess, the uh, the 90s. And um and was a great, great run. 
great run. Loved uh, loved doing that work. Super creative. Uh, interviewed lots of great people. My my subject matter was typically sports and entertainment, so not not really any heavy news. Although I was a typically brilliant editorial writer as a senior in college, so you can only imagine uh, how many how many pontifications where I was just exactly right. I wrote. Uh, in that, but uh, mostly been a lot of uh, soft stuff. So I'm, I'm a musician and ran a music magazine in the early '90s with a friend, and got to interview just all kinds of great people and learn learn about them, learn more about music, and kind of explore what that meant for for me. But a great uh, great creative outlet uh, that was uh, was great for a while. Once once I had uh, two kids in the house, uh, creative endeavors weren't quite uh, weren't paying quite as much as some other opportunities that were out there. And, uh, made the jump over into uh, the corporate world, and uh, I had had a great run there with some very successful entrepreneurs. And um, when started my own company with uh, with some other fellows in 1999, we were an internet incubator. And uh, based on what I'm doing now, you can only imagine how well that turned out for everybody. So, wow. <laughs> I want to hold this because I'm seeing a theme or hearing of a theme in your life. And I certainly took that in as, you know, the weekend that we had there at Fall Creek Falls with 45 other classmates in leadership Chattanooga. But there's this theme of having fun. Like and and I sure. I see that that, uh, that yeah you're in the music industry you you uh, did all these fun things and then kids came along that changed but your creative endeavors went in a different direction right they did they did yeah. well and, and having kids I mean you're just you're you're around fun all the time you know people yeah. who are um, enmeshed with their sense of joy and wonder in the world and I mean what a great what a great thing to to be able to tap into. So, so you're, you're, you've got adult sons, is it? And, and also grandchildren, three, three adult sons and two grandkids. And so that's uh, the, the youngest one is finishing up his studies. So we're, uh, we, we've been kind of empty nesters for a couple of years and uh, working, working to get that last one out. Wow. That's beautiful. So you and your wife have partnered together to raise these three sons and you're at the stage in your life that is the empty nest or almost empty nest stage of life. Yeah. Well, well, tell us more about how your growth, your development as at, in these different roles in your life in the first chapter, second chapter, now the third chapter, and then having gone through these roles of being a new dad, dad of teenage boys, and now dad of adults. Uh, I would, I'm curious, and, and even in your marriage, how has that how has that transformed you to actually where you are right now? You know, Judy, I think I've always sort of followed my uh, passion, followed whatever felt like something cool to go and do. So um, my, my wife, my partner, my managing partner, if we're going to be specific, um, is stuck with me for 34 years through uh, lots of um career changes and decisions I made that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we're a little, a little more impulsive than, uh, you know, in retrospect, I might've, I might've gone after, uh, but everything, everything I've done up until I started doing this work kind of led up to that, had this, a very kind of strange jumping around from, uh, different kinds of publishers to different kinds of business ventures, uh, that all kind of wound up in, in what I'm doing now. And, and I, I mean, the, the funny thing about my career is I started in you know, my first chapter, I'm trying to reach sort of millions of people with, with publishing or one which millions of people. Mm -hmm. uh, the second chapter was really in kind of sales and marketing more in kind of a business to business realm. So I'm really trying to reach like, you know, hundreds or thousands of people. And now as a facilitator, I'm trying to get like 45 people at the leadership Chattanooga retreat to talk to each other and be creative together. And so it's, as it's, as I've kind of narrowed the focus of, of numbers of people, I think it's, it's deepened the impact I have realized over that time. If you get, if you get the right dozen people in the room, you can really move the needle on things. And so that's, the, that's, that's why a lot of my work now is around strategy and culture and uh, how do we get from point A to point B and uh, thrive all along the way. And so, uh, wow. In doing that, it's I like to think it's pretty transformative work, uh, and and that's the thing that drives me now. It's really kind of how how do is there a way to help people be more creative, more productive, more 
prosperous. And I think that that's that's one of the things I always come back to is prosperity. You know, it's, it's everybody needs to be able to define whatever prosperity is for them and anything that I can do to help them get there, mm. then that's that's what I'm here for. But but it's also on people to define what prosperity means for them and not just mm. uh, take whatever media is shoving you or what your family expectations were or anything else. You know, that's that, that's a thing that has to come from the inside, which is why I think you find so many people in um, sort of the entrepreneurial world. I see this a lot. Uh, guys and gals who just just kind of keep running, keep running, keep running, because for them it's the it's it's almost the chase. It's what it's what gets them uh, up in the morning, not really kind of what's my what's my end game. You know, it's just kind of running. But I think that and having an idea of what uh, maybe not end game isn't the right word, but what's what, what is my picture of prosperity? What what is what does it look like when things are going just the way I want them? And mm. kind of pointing your pointing your activities toward that. That's beautiful. You, so you know you're talking to a therapist. And so as you talk about the impulsivity <laughs> I'm and, and, now, and you yes. talk about also the, I'm not trying to analyze you, but but talk about the, uh, you know, the distractions or the going from here to there and how your your marriage of 34 years has like, you know, gone through these changes and everything. So I think it's, it's beautiful, number one, that you're bringing this out. Thank you. Because a lot of my listeners are entrepreneurial couples and, and you got to have somebody that's around you. It's almost kind of like a, a kite, you know, and, and totally. you got to have somebody holding the string or something. Or something uh, man, like. I, I use that. I use that analogy about <laughs> Lynn all the time. She, she is the string on my kite. And oh. uh, otherwise I would be uh, fluttering out into the the troposphere at this point. So oh, wow, wow, that's amazing! And also for folks to to hear as they listen to this, if you got some of these same kind of things going on, go back to listen to uh, Melissa Orlov's uh, podcast. I think it was episode number one, talking about the ADHD marriage. But I'm not saying that that's what you have, Joe. Yes. <laughs> Well, there's there, there's there's one side of us that probably fits that definition. I think it's uh, and, and you're talking to it. So well, and here's the thing: I think it's great that you're balancing your yourself. I mean, that you you need have that balance. And when couples do go through uh, struggles or conflicts in their in their marriage in their relationship, it's it's a time to think. Hmm, you know, just like what is what is the learning here? So. I love how, number one, you did differentiate between a facilitator and a consultant. I love it how you can take teams and even I'm telling you the experience that I had with the five, you know, we had five at each of our tables Please, yeah. and, and we had these Legos. It was so cool. We were playing with Legos and you're the Lego man. Cause it was really cool because that's one of your <laughs> things that you, you did is you, you've developed this product um, for, first of all, I kind of want to ground people in. We were playing Legos at this, <laughs> at this uh, retreat that you were facilitating, but share with us about, uh, about that, about your, what you developed and and the methodology behind that. Yeah, well, so I, I worked for Lego in the early 2000s. We developed a product that is uh, still available, widely used, called Lego Serious Play. Mm -hmm. That is basically um, play for a purpose. It's grown-up play, and it was designed to be a way to kind of process the, the organizational world a lot differently than we, we typically do. We usually, uh, everybody speaks the language of, PowerPoint or Excel or flip charts or whiteboards, which I also do, but but also love Lego and uh, and it's um you know it's a great thing. I it, I talked about my three boys, so it, it definitely made me the coolest dad at the elementary school. <laughs> Absolutely. For years and years. But yeah, so so worked for Lego and got to um, work with a really remarkable team. I, it's funny. I just this weekend was moving some files around and the business card I had from 20 years ago fell out of everything I was going through. And it just immediately transported me to this experience of 20 years ago uh, of working with uh, really remarkable people, uh, working for a great brand that gave us freedom to kind of create something awesome. Uh, and, and really, and seeing what it's become now. So I, I worked on the project from 2001 to 2004. I've been int introduced to it at the um, right before 2000. Uh, and that, that kind of brought me on as a beta tester, uh, did some product development stuff, did some research. And then uh, about the time that my internet incubator, I mentioned before, was was going down, uh, Lego Series Play was going up. And they came and asked if, uh, as, a, as a great recruiter would do, is like, hey, Jody, do you know anybody that might like to travel around the world and sell Lego? Like, <laughs> 
So yeah, I think I do. It's me. <laughs> and so so started that relationship with them. And and again, just a, a remarkable team of um, you know the, the inventors of it are these uh, really remarkable business school professors who had Lego as a client and the the CEO said we we must use Lego to figure out our problems and they went and did that and uh, and the innovators who really uh, took it from just a, it being a thing to it being really out in a in an ecosystem really uh, Robert Rasmussen and Per Christensen were some of my uh, Danish counterparts on there if you didn't know, Lego is is a is the crown jewel of Denmark. It is uh, not just a company for them, okay. and uh, and so got, got to work with these guys who are still really managing a lot of what we dreamed up twenty years ago, which was this open sourced, self managed global community of consultants who all use Lego Series Play. Uh, and I'm not sure what the number is, but it's in the thousands of of consultants who've been trained and are and are using Lego Series Play around the world. And um, and so in doing that, really got switched on by the idea of facilitation that, you know, you can put a process in front of people and they can get more out of themselves than even they think is possible. I uh, got switched on that you could use Lego to do that. Who knew? That was amazing. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and then just uh, this idea of the hand-brain connection that, you know, when your hands are moving, your brain is typically not far behind. And that's mm. really any kind of learner that you are, but especially if you're a kinesthetic learner, a haptic learner, a hands-on learner, like I am, uh, using Lego really activates different parts of your brain uh, and, and really leads to more possibilities for breakthrough innovation and uh, strategy and things like that. Well, from a personal experience and experiencing the this, you know, the the Lego project and doing that with four other people in the in at my table Jody it was really amazing the conversations that came out the relationships and kind of getting to know people and i'm thinking wow this is amazing and so i i just thought that was pretty brilliant i've got to tell you cuz uh yeah you you were so gracious to let some of us or all of us like to pick out whatever we wanted to take home. And uh, I took it, I took some home and had it there on the table. And I was um, getting ready to keep my little grandchildren, my little granddaughters, my, my grown son, who's like 31 years old, looks at that. And he says, mom, I, I didn't know you kept that for me. This, I remember this, <laughs> we all have, you know, we have this uh, history with Lego and yeah. it, is, it, it really does. It raises up some attachment for many of us that had grown up with that. Well, and, and I think that, that that's a great observation and, and one I get from a lot of people and it's just my own experience, you know, just hours and hours and hours spent in, uh, in just kind of flow. You know, there's a, a, a professor named uh, Chiksun Mihai. I won't try to spell it for you, but he's out there. Wrote a book called Flow. And, and in Flow, he really, a lot of the concepts that are in there are what kind of drove uh, how we developed Lego Series Play. There's, when, when you're in flow, it's that moment that I, I hope everybody who's listening to this has had where time just seems mm. to stand still. Mm. There's no friction. Uh, everything is going just the, the way it needs to. Now, because it's flow, it can't always be that way. And so uh, Cheeks and Mihai talks about how you, you kind of, you, you go out of flow when things get a little bit harder, so a little mm -hmm. more challenging. You drop back into flow once you get good at it. Once you get good at it, you get kind of bored. So you got to change the change the trajectory a little bit, make it a little more challenging. So there's this, you try to reach that that flow state anytime you're, well, anytime you're doing any sort of creative endeavor that you, mm. you want to, you don't want to get stuck by, uh, things being too hard. Mm. You also don't want to get bored. So how how do you kind of keep it keep it spicy uh, through there, but not you know, not too spicy? I, well, I think that is a pretty profound concept. First of all, do uh, I'll get the link to the resources that you mentioned, even though I couldn't write his name down. But the book is yeah. Flow. <laughs> but uh, it, it, what you just said, Jody, is exactly what we as adults need for that. Uh, you know, for our brains to be functioning even better and yeah, even for our relationships. Totally. Uh, and that that's so very important. Like sometimes, I mean, I, I guess our society, we've been taught that, you know, you, gra you graduate, you go to college or whatever, and you can't have fun anymore, or you don't have fun, you got to settle into a job. Uh, but that's so not really healthy for us. So to have this yeah. flow and this creativity is so very important. But those elements that you talked about, yeah, we, we don't need to be bored in life. And 
honestly, through that um, that retreat that you had facilitated, it was it, it it was great for these relationships, these people that I'm just now getting to know that yeah. that are going to be on my team for the rest of the year. Um, but it really did bond us together to be creating and and have these ideas and these aha moments. Boiling that down to what I do for a living, and that is to help couples create connection beyond conflict. And I'm also going into the corporations as you are to get my message out more. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is so much what couples need, and especially those that have been married long term, uh, that you need to have that spice and that creativity and that flow in your relationship. So I think I'm going to dial it back a little bit and ask how you doing what you're doing has affected your your marriage or even your closest relationships with your family members. That's a good question. I am, you know, I'm really count myself. I know this is overused, but hashtag blessed with with having uh, having grown up with a terrific family. We're all still very close. Um, but I think there, there's a the thread that kind of ran through a lot of things that, that you just mentioned are, is play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how, how, how can you inject some play into uh, really everything that you do? And I think in, in looking back over my life, my relationships, play is a thing that's been really important. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's not always, you know, going to uh, play around a golf or tennis or anything like that. It's also just being playful. You know, you, you, you learn how to uh, joke in a constructive way. You you know play games that are you know not what you would normally do. My wife and I uh, play play a new board game. Try to pick up a new board game every every year or so, just to kind of you know try something, just try try something a little bit different. And uh, and I think that that's the, that's a thing that I would say was uh, was really really gelled for me working for Lego. Uh, mm. Coming, that's that's all about play, mm. obviously, and uh, in kind of understanding it from a from an adult perspective, um, really saw that th that was the thing that ran through everything I had done, kind of through my whole life, was that there was always something, like you mentioned, always something that was fun, always something that was playful, mm. always something that was kind of lighthearted uh, through all that. One of my um, guiding principles is to take the work seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Ooh, and, and I think that that's that. the, that's the thing I've tried to really instill. And I, and you, as you, as you, you've got kids relatively the same age as mine, as as you watch them grow up, and especially become parents on their own, mm. uh, you, you you realize that's either I, I didn't screw it up too bad, you know, or <laughs> or the, or that they really internalized some of the stuff that was uh, that that I hope they would. And they're and pretty I, and I resilient. <laughs> they're pretty resilient. Yeah, <laughs> even yeah, when they do mess even up. Even if I did screw it up, still resilient. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. If, I'm sure you probably have experienced this. By the time you reach that grandparent club, I've got five grandchildren myself, and the oldest is 13, the youngest is three. But it's like, it's like no other. It's like, it's an awakening in life. And I don't know if you've experienced that, but you just oh, don't even completely. have that concept. You can't even grab a hold of that before you become a grandparent. So yeah. yeah. And how to get on the floor with your grandkids and play with Lego or whatever they're playing with. It's like, they really bring us this, uh, this aliveness is what I've yeah. discovered anyway. And, and then, I, and then I've got to get up off the floor and that's, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's a lot harder than it was when I was just parenting. Yeah, my my big breakthrough was actually watching my uh, watching my son parent because mm. that's what, what watching him be a parent was kind of like oh this is this, this is where the circle gets complete or at least gets yeah. one more turn around. Isn't uh, that and, and beautiful? It is. It is. Did it's, they it's, did it's, they it's, say, it's, Dad, how in the world did you do it? <laughs> All the time, which I really love. Yeah, and there is that bond. I think here's what I really want to get a message to the folks that are listening, because there's a lot of people that might be listening and they're going through some challenges in their relationships and their lives. And I want you to know that, you know what, they are uh, relationships are always changing. Yeah. And yeah, like you were saying, you're, when your sons have become dads, then you've got this bond, don't you? You have these experiences, which can be like s such an enriching thing, you know, in, in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So, Whatever struggles, if you're raising teenagers and you're that really maybe, you know, having a hard time or there's some tension in your marriage, there is light at the other end. I so believe that there is purpose beyond the conflict. I mean, conflict is actually an opportunity to 
to grow, to grow up. And the fun is like icing on the cake, isn't it, Jody? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's in my life, I've tried to make it the cake. I'll just, I'll just say that. It's, it's a, I'm, I'm in the Ben and Jerry's camp of, of if it's not fun, why do it? So you know what? Which led me around to a lot of different roles in my life. So I love that because that's why you've got a smile on your face. You are having fun in your life. Who said we're supposed to go around with, you know, such serious looks and, you know, take ourselves too serious. I know in my field, you know, we are like, we can be too serious. We can be way too like looking for the issue and the problem and the focus on that. But having fun is so good for the soul. It's good for your mental health and everything. So you're doing yeah. that. Yes, it's great fun. And that's and that's the thing, even if I'm using Lego or not, when I'm facilitating anything, um, I'm trying to make it fun. And that's why what, one of my ground rules is always what I just said, like, you know, take the work seriously because the work is serious. It's what mm -hmm. we're here for. Uh, but when you take yourself too seriously, that's the part where you just you suck the fun out of it. You make it all about you, and and let's let, let's kind of leave that. And you check your ego at the door. Come in. Let's and let's work on some stuff together and have fun along the way because uh, most anything can get done in my experience more easily if you're having a little bit of fun. Uh, to to well, that's the maybe that's the spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go down. Yeah. sometimes for, for things like that. So, Well, what you just shared too uh, really goes along. I'm excited about a, a keynote that I'll be presenting in as I uh, entitled this keynote, Picking Up Good Vibrations, Beach Boys Psychology 101. And, uh, <laughs> but, but hey, that's, you know, when you, when you are too serious and you take yourself too serious, I mean, yes, we want to learn the life lessons, whatever, but we don't want to stay there too long in that whatever seriousness, because you can walk into a room and be like a black hole sucking up all of the energy. So yeah. it is so important not to stick your hand, head in the sand about the things that, that are serious, but to get a bigger picture of, you know, our lives are designed to be vibrantly uh, abundant and growing and expanding. And I think that's what you're doing with your teams. Well, I think, you know, abundant is, is a word I would, I would love to have people describe me as mm. it's, I, I love to feel like I've got an abundant spirit. Those are the kind of people I look to be around a lot. And mm. Uh, in that focus, it goes hand in hand with prosperity, like we were talking about before. There's the, there's there's some there's abundance and prosperity for everybody out there on their terms, mm. and and taking the time to define what that is and figure out is there a path to that, and then what are the various ways I can get to to that end. Then let's do that. And, and I, I use word I use word end or point B like it's that those are milestones. You know, that's, the end, end is not the right word, but but, but milestones, because I think, especially for entrepreneurs, um, I, I don't know if there's anything besides serial entrepreneurs. I think every entrepreneur is probably a serial entrepreneur, <laughs> but you, you you define, you know, what are those different gates that you've got to pass through uh, to, to feel like you, you've gotten to where it needs to go. And I think for just my, in my experience, having worked in entrepreneurial ventures and uh, both nonprofit and for-profit as clients, uh, you know, my, my message to entrepreneurs is is to know when it's time to to hand it over to somebody else because mm. they're mm. just if, but hanging on for hanging on to it for too long uh, is going to cause problems for for you and everybody else. And and know what you're good at. And entrepreneurs, in my experience, are great at uh, starting things up, casting the vision, getting the the ball rolling from nothing. Uh, and then there's a point where you got to become more corporate or more structured or more something that you you probably haven't been before mm. and decide if that's if that's a, if that's capabilities you want to add into your work or if it's time to let somebody else uh, lead the charge. I, I use the analogy of or the, the story of um, Moses and Joshua from the Bible all the time that you, know, you got to have a visionary to lead the people where you know, nobody's sure where this is going. But you, you get to the, the promised land and you see Moses. He goes up the mountain, turns over to Joshua. It's the prophet and the warrior yes. is, is sort of the archetype. And so you prophet comes, starts the company, warrior comes in, takes it over and turns it into something uh, stable and awesome and lasting forever. And well, forever, for as long as it'll last. Yeah. And, uh, but then, but, but to know as an entrepreneur, what's your, 
you know, what, what's the point that you need to uh, think about that transition uh, and not to hold on to it too long. Cause there's, um, there's, there's nothing worse. And I've had clients who were in this position that they were sort of the last ones to know it was time for them to go. Mm, and mm. and you, that's, that, that is not, uh, that's not a happy place to be for mm. anybody really. And it's, it takes a long time to figure out that letting go part of that. But I think that the letting go is what enables the serial part of entrepreneurs to happen. That, you know, you can jump off and let the other thing emerge. Everything you just said, Jody, applies to relationships too. Uh, we we tend to to hang on to things that are not working and no, uh, or that no longer serve us or right. our ways of being or relating. They need to change. And you've been married long enough to know that. Okay, we go through our, our early marriage stage. No kids. We get kids. You know that changes. All those dynamics change. There's things that need to be let go of and things in, that need to be growing and expanding and em- embracing. So. Uh, so I, with that, what would you say, two questions actually I have for you, what would you say to your younger self? Let's just say, I don't know how old you are right now, but let's just say during your phase of raising uh, teenage boys, what would be your message to your younger self? Be patient. Stay optimistic, um, and maybe uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you stuck with one thing for just a little while. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> patient, optimistic, and just maybe a little bit more stability and staying with one thing in your entrepreneurial spirit. That's great. That's great. And um, so also, uh, I'm curious how people can get in touch with you. So my website, jodylintz.com, there's mm-hmm. a Google form on there. Drop me a line. I'd be happy to talk to you about Lego and facilitation and trust and all the things that are uh, that help to make good cultures go. Love it. And I know there's a story behind all of this. You went through chapter one, chapter two. Now you're in chapter three. Do you have a chapter four already planned out at this point in your life? Not really. I, th- this is, I like this chapter a lot. Uh, I like, I really like being, uh, I think my official demographic designation and maybe yours too is, is lifestyle solopreneur. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I like the lifestyle that I've been able to carve out for myself. Uh, I'm not interested in building a big organization. I, I think I'm, I'm a pretty good employee and a decent manager, but I'm, about all I can handle. So, uh, so I, I like I like being that uh, solopreneur. Uh, and again, so I've, I've you know my prosperity I've defined as me being able to work with the clients I want to as much as I want to, uh, take off the time that I, that I need and want to go and do the things that I, I want to do outside of work. Uh, and you know, knock wood, it's it's um, it's working pretty good these days. That's great, and to have that wonderful support of your wife is a great thing. Could not do it without the string on my kite, for sure. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Jody. This has been an awesome conversation. Thanks, Judy. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Talk about teamwork, creativity, and flow. Jody's message made me think of previous guests on this podcast, Gay and Katie Hendricks, on episode 26, talk about creativity and living in the flow of life in your relationship. It'll be so worth it if you wanted to go back and connect those dots, listen to the two podcasts side by side, because you'll be so inspired professionally and in your personal life. For now, here's some takeaways from Jody as we talked about finding fun and flow in life. We all know, number one, what flow even feels like. It's like as if time stands still and there's no friction. So if we learn to live in the flow just enough so that we can avoid that stuckness and boredom, but be pushed on to the next level. I love what he said about that. Number two, take work seriously, but don't take your life too seriously. Goodness, we're living our lives 24 seven and we need fun. I so resonate with that. And then number three, inject play into everything you do. And I caught a little phrase that Jody said, if it's not fun, why do it? 
That's a really good question to ask. Out of curiosity, I'm curious, what resonated with you? Be assured that I read every comment from those who share their takeaways by filling out the form on the website, betterrelationshipsbetterlife.com. I would absolutely love to hear from you. In the meantime, please share, subscribe, rate, and comment in the streaming platform of your choice. Next, we'll we'll talk about, actually, we don't have a next talk about, I think I'm going to do a solo episode. (laughs) This will be my first, I think, yeah, it will be my first solo episode. So in the meantime, I will see you next time on Better Relationships, Better Life.